By the cross you came and broke them down You broke them down There were chains around us By your grace we are no longer bound No longer bound You called me out of the grave You called me into the light You called my name and then my heart came alive Your love is greater your love is stronger, your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Your love is greater, your love is stronger, your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Feel the darkness shaking. All the dead are coming back to life, come back to life. Hear the song awaken, all creation singing, we're alive, cause you're alive. You call me out of the grave, you call me into the light, you call my name and then my heart came alive. Your love is greater, your love is stronger, your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Your love is greater, your love is stronger, your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. And what a love we found, death can hold us down. We shout it out, we're alive, cause you're alive, and what a love we found, death can hold us down. We shout it out, we're alive, cause you're alive, and what a love we found, death can hold us down. We shout it out, we're alive, cause you're alive. Awakens, awakens me. Your love is greater. Your love is stronger. Your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Your love is greater. Your love is stronger. Your love awakens, awakens, awakens. One more time. Your love is greater. Your love is stronger. Awakens, awakens me. How great, how great is your 
How great is our God. Yes, see again for the last time. How great is our God. Oh, how great is our God. Oh, sing with me. How great is our God. And all will see how great, how great. Hallelujah. The name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise His wonderful name. Lord, we glorify and we magnify Your name, Lord Jesus. You deserve the praises of Your people, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we declare Your greatness, Lord God. You are a great God and we welcome You, Lord God, into this place. Lord, we, we welcome you, Lord God, in, in our Zoom fellowship, Lord God, our service. But Lord, we will continue to declare, Lord God, your greatness and your goodness. And we lay down everything, Lord God, to you at your feet. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, good afternoon, New Hope family. It's the fourth, thirst, fourth Sunday of um, January. And I'm just so thankful for uh, seeing each one of you. I can see um, a lot of people today and hopefully we could see each other more uh, live. If you could um, uh, turn on ca some cameras so we could see each other. I know we don't see each other more often in live, but throughout the service, we would love to see you. But let me, as we start our service, let me just read to you Psalms. 34 verses 4 and 5, it says there that I sought the Lord and he answered me and he delivered me from all my fears. Amen. Because we have a great God. That's why those who look to him are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. Amen. So let's reveal those faces that are not covered with shame. And let's continue to have that joy in the Lord as we go through the service today. Pastor Amy will be sharing the word of God with Psalms 21. Welcome, everyone. I'm Pastor Amy Delacruz, and we are so glad to have you join with us today. Our message today is entitled, Thanking God for Victory. Today's psalm is connected to Psalm 20, which Pastor Ricky presented to us last week. Psalm 21 is a prayer of thanksgiving for the victory granted by God in answer to the prayer offered up to the Lord in Psalm 20 for the king's victory in battle. As with Psalm 20, Psalm 21 is also a royal psalm. And Pastor Ricky told us last week that a royal psalm portrays the Lord as a sovereign ruler over all the earth. Let's read Psalm 21 now. So if you have your Bibles, you can turn with me to Psalm chapter 21, 
I'll be reading from the NASB version. Psalm 21, praise for deliverance. For the music director, a Psalm of David. Lord, in your strength, the king will be glad. And in your salvation, how greatly he will rejoice. You have given him his heart's desire, and you have not withheld the request of his lips, Selah. For you meet him with the blessings of good things. You have set a crown of pure gold on his head. He asked for life from you, and you gave it to him. Length of days forever and ever. His glory is great through you. You make him joyful with the joy of your presence. For the king trusts in the Lord, and through the faithfulness of the Most High, he will not be shaken. Your hand will find all your enemies. Your right hand will find those who hate you. You will make them as a fiery oven in the time of your anger. The Lord will swallow them up in his wrath and fire will devour them. You will eliminate their descendants from the earth and their children from among the sons of mankind. Though they intended evil against you and devised a plot, they will not succeed. For you will make them turn their back. You will take aim at their faces with your bowstrings. Be exalted, Lord, in your strength. We will sing and praise your power. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you that you wake each one of us up today. Thank you for your word and for the Psalm of David, which is a powerful reminder for all of us to be thankful that you not only hear our prayers, but you also answer them. Open our hearts and minds to hear from you what you would have to say to us today. In Jesus' name, amen. Before we begin our first point today, I would like to point out that at the beginning of this chapter, we have some information given to us regarding this psalm. It is titled, Praise of Deliverance. Whereas last week, Psalm 20 was titled, Prayer for Victory Over Enemies. This psalm was written by King David for the people of Israel. It also tells us that it is for the choir director. This means that the psalm was to be sung as a result of answered prayer for the Israelites. And as many of the psalms show us, David learned to put his trust and confidence in the Lord. That doesn't mean that David's life was perfect. He was human. He made mistakes, just like you and I do. None of us are without fault. David had troubles, trials, and testings, foes and enemies, and times when his life was threatened. We can all relate to some of those situations, can't we? What was it that enabled David to get through those situations? It was his constant trust in the Lord, Most High, that held him through all of it. And just like God was with David through all of his many different circumstances, he too will be with us if we invite him to. Amen? Throughout Psalm 21, there is an element of thanksgiving. First, David shares thanksgiving for successes in verses 1 to 7. And in verses 1 to 3, David shares thanksgiving for what had been asked for. Verse 1 says, Lord, in your strength, a king will be glad, and in your salvation, how greatly he will rejoice. Do you see how David began this psalm? He began it by acknowledging that it was the Lord's strength for which he was glad. David is declaring that all the successes referred to 
should be traced to God and not to the king. For it was not human strength nor human skill of David himself, but the victory was through the power of God alone. Amen. David also says that it was in your salvation, meaning that the salvation and the deliverance from his foes was given or granted by God. David is thanking God for everything that God did to bring victory to save his people. He had just prayed to ask God for favor and victory for this in Psalm 20, verses 5, 6, and 9. David gives God the credit because he knows that is where the deliverance came from. Do you remember in Psalm 20, verse 7 from last week, some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we trust in the name of the Lord our God. David desired to give glory and honor to God, not to himself. When David was much younger, we see that he had a similar response. Do you recall when David went to fight Goliath, the Philistine? He said in 1 Samuel 17, verse 45, you come to me with a sword, a spear and a, spear and a saber, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of armies, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. Even at a young age, David put his full trust in the Lord. Where is our trust? Do we, like David, know where to put our trust? Or are we trying to put our trust in ourselves or in other people instead of placing our trust in the Lord? Because of the victory of the Lord, there is great rejoicing. Verse 2 says, You have given him his heart's desire, and you have not withheld the request of his lips. Selah. In verse 2, the Lord gave David his heart's desire. If we look back to Psalm 20, verse 4, it was the prayer of the people that God would grant their heart's desire and fulfill all his purpose. And in verse 5 of chapter 20, it says, May the Lord fulfill all your petitions. Here we have the response to the prayer request in verse 2. All that had been prayed for in chapter 20 had been granted. Look what it says next. And you have not withheld the request of his lips. The deliverance from his enemies, which David had earnestly desired in his heart, he also requested with his lips. Luke 6.45 says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. David offered up in prayer what was in his heart to the Lord. And God's response? Nothing was withheld. The requests were not denied or refused. They were all granted. Why? David asked with the right motive. He was seeking the Lord's help and was following the Lord. David trusted in the Lord to completely see him through the battle he was facing. Are you trusting in the Lord to see you through your current circumstances? Next, verse 3a says, For you meet him with the blessings of good things. Here again, David is thanking God for the blessing of good things that he has received from the Lord. God already knew what David needed. God designed the blessing even before it was asked. James 1.17 says, every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. David continues to offer up thanksgiving for what God has done. This reminds me of a story of a missionary who was serving in Africa, who had a prayer request of needing something, and so they prayed to God about it. Within a week or the next day, I don't remember which it was, a package arrived from the United States with a very said needed items. God had placed it on somebody's heart to send the items well in advance before the missionary even voiced the need. As Matthew 6, 8 says, for your father knows what you need before you ask him, amen? God goes before us and provides even before we ask. Verse 3 says, you set a crown of pure gold on his head. This is referring to the victory David had achieved. This is the victory that the Lord had given him. He was a conqueror. 
And God is still giving us victories in our life's battles today. Amen. Next, in verses four to seven, David is thankful for the added blessings beyond what was asked for. These were not specifically sought out, and these blessings are both permanent and eternal. Verse four says, he asked for life from you and you gave it to him, length of days forever and ever. We see Psalm 61 verses five to six says, you have heard my vows, O God. You have given me inheritance of those who fear your name. You will prolong the king's life. His years will be as many generations. We know from the previous chapter, David was asking for a success in battle. Obviously, if you're going into battle or you're going to war, your life would be in danger. David prayed that God would defend him. He sincerely sought protection as he went forth in battle. And in verse 4b, we have the response to his petition. You, Lord, gave it to him. The Lord both heard and answered his prayer. David was saved from the danger he faced in going to battle. David sought life for himself, but he received much more than he asked. There would be no end to his reign, not his personally, but the reign of his family or descendants. Jesus was born directly from the line of David. Our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, comes from the royal line of David. God granted David's request for life and much more than that. And this is so like God, isn't it? How many times do we pray for something and God goes beyond what we ask for? God gives us more than we ask for when we pray. Amen? He loves us and desires what is best for us. Verse 5 says, His glory is great through your salvation. Splendor and majesty you placed upon him. Verse 5 continues with the battle theme. It is the salvation or deliverance of God that manifests in triumph over his enemies that brings glory to the king. Again, King David is not taking credit for the victory given. It wasn't anything he did. It was all that God did through him. And every child of God can experience God's glory. As the Apostle Paul said in Colossians 1.27, Christ in you, the hope of glory. When we ask Jesus into our hearts as Lord of our lives, we gain eternal life. Even though our earthly lives will pass away at some point, we will live forever and ever with the Lord. We will be with him in glory. Amen? Splendor and majesty you placed upon him. What does this mean? David excuse me, God made David king. He gave David victory in battles and he promised perpetuity, endlessness of his reign. How? It's through what Christ Jesus did for us on the cross of Calvary. Jesus, full of glory and honor, came to earth and had the whole weight of sin laid upon him. He died offering his body as the perfect sacrifice for our sins. When we have Christ in our hearts, we will reign with him for all eternity. This present world is not our home. We're just passing through to where we will spend eternity. So let's put this in perspective of a saved sinner who is a child of God. Believers in Christ can truly attribute glory and majesty to the one who deserves it, the Lord Jesus Christ. How? In the fact that God has redeemed us and how this was accomplished, the saving work done in our lives, in our adoption to God's family, and in that we are now children of the king. And because we are children of the king, we have life forevermore. Amen? Verse 6 says, For you make him most blessed forever. You make him joyful with the joy of your presence. 
Blessed by God, the king is a source of blessing to his people. The Lord has made him a blessing to others, and he is a source of blessing to others. He is glad and rejoices with gladness in God's presence. Blessings would be given through him. Eternal blessings would descend to all people through the Messiah, Jesus Christ, since he was born through the line of David. The next verse, 7, says, For the king trusts in the Lord, and through the faithfulness of the Most High, he will not be shaken. Verse 7 is pivotal. All these blessings that we just spoke of in the first six verses resulted from David praying and talking with God. He continuously looked to God for his protection. The key is that he trusted in the Lord. David is known as a man after God's own heart. He found favor with God. Because David found favor with God and experienced it, he could look forward to it continuing. He was confident he would not be shaken. He would not be moved because he knew if he continued to trust in the Lord and to follow him, he could stand firm. His hope and trust were in the Lord. Even though trials would come, David knew that God was with him and that he would get through those difficult circumstances, those difficulties. And the same is true for us. If we keep our eyes on Jesus and stay true to him and his word, when difficult times come, we will not be shaken because we know that our hope is found in Jesus Christ. We must continually trust God to see us through, just as David did. And when we do this, no matter what we face, whatever comes against us on this earth, our future is secure. Jesus promised eternal life to all those who believe in him. David taught his people, the Israelites, to look back with joy and praise God for what he has done for them. The same is true for us today just as much as it was for David back then. As King David had so many successes to thank God for, as Christians, we too also have experienced successes, victories, and blessings that we can recall and thank God for, isn't it? Let us follow David's lead and thank God for all that he has done for us and brought us through. Next, David shows us that there is rejoicing over what is to come, in verses 8 to 12. David looks forward to the complete and final triumph of God over his enemies. Previously, David was declaring his thanksgiving for all that God had done for him. Now we see that King David is looking forward to what God is going to do in the future the complete and final triumph of God over all his enemies. David implies that the God who enabled David to have victory over his foes and enemies will not stop until he has complete victory. Amen. In verse eight, we read, your hand will find all your enemies. Your right hand will find those who hate you. David begins this section with the hand of God will find his enemies. Here hand denotes action, and right hand signifies power. The enemies of God are all those who hate him. Ultimately, we know that all who oppose God, who do not believe in God, will be found out and conquered. All who oppose the truth, those who reject the word of God, who deny Christ, will be found out. And it seems to be part of human nature to ignore consequences until it's too late. God gives us an awful lot of opportunity to make up our minds whether or not we will follow him. But we cannot expect him to wait forever. God knows what's in our hearts right now. We all must answer to God. When our time on this earth comes to a close, our true heart will be revealed since we cannot hide anything from God. We either serve him or we don't. God is all knowing. Nothing gets by him. Either we accept God's truth and are saved, or we reject that truth and face judgment and the result of that choice. 
the punishment for our sins. The choice is ours. Have we made our decision? It's not too late to call upon the name of the Lord if you have not made a decision to follow Christ. Job 34, 2 says, There is no darkness or deep shadow where the workers of iniquity may hide themselves. There's no place where anyone who hates God can hide from him. No enemy is beyond God's reach. And in verse 9, it says, you will make them as a fiery oven in the time of your anger. The Lord will swallow them up in his wrath and fire will devour them. The meaning here is that the wicked will be consumed or destroyed as if they were on fire. The wrath of God would destroy them. And there are several instances in the Bible which state this. Deuteronomy 4.24 says, for the Lord your God is a consuming fire, a jealous God. Deuteronomy 32, 22 says, For a fire is kindled in my anger and burns to the lowest part of Sheol and consumes the earth with its yield and sets on fire the foundations of the mountains. And in Matthew 13, 41 and 42, it states, the son of man will send forth his angels and they will gather out of his kingdom all the stumbling blocks and those who commit lawlessness and will throw them into the furnace of fire. In that place, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This verse is saying that when the Lord captures his enemies, they will be the object of his wrath. They will be burned, consumed and devoured by fire. Fire is a symbol of hell, eternal torment, as we read in Revelation 20.10, that the devil is thrown into the lake of fire. The judgment and triumph are complete, as indicated in Psalm 21, verse 10, which says, you will eliminate their descendants from the earth. And their children from among the sons of mankind. It is saying when judgment comes, the future dies. Death destroys the fruitfulness of the next generation. There is a lot of sin and lawlessness which abounds in our world today. It may seem dark and dismal, but there is a time coming when truth and justice will prevail, when those who oppose God will be destroyed. We can rejoice in the fact that we know that ultimately truth will prevail. Evil and evildoers will not be victorious in the end. Jesus Christ will be victorious, amen? Righteousness will prevail. Next, look at the promise that we have here in verse 10. Though they intended evil against you and devised a plot, they will not succeed. Even though the evildoers made their plans and still make plans to hinder the cause of God, they ultimately cannot succeed. Why? God will prevail. God will thwart them. He will intervene. The evildoers brought destruction upon themselves by their own doing. The plot of the enemy is unfulfilled because God has brought the fire of his judgment against them. Look what verse 12 says. For you will make them turn their back. You will take aim at their faces with your bowstrings. This judgment is pictured for us, causing them to turn their backs. God defeats his enemies in battle as his arrows hit them head on and they are routed. The evildoers care, cannot carry on their wicked schemes or plans because God intervenes. It means that as the arrows are sent, the result would be a hasty flight. The enemies would retreat and as a result, their evil plans will be defeated by the Lord. As God's people are saved and delivered, those who attack them are destroyed. In Revelation 14, we have a similar situation as the angel pronounces judgment against anyone who submits or surrenders to the Antichrist. Why? Because that person is siding against God. Revelation 14 verses 9 and 10 says, If anyone worships the beast and his image, and receives a mark on his forehead or on his hand, he will also drink 
of the wine of the wrath of God, which is mixed in full strength in the cup of his anger. And he will be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the lamb. The victory of God's kingdom means the defeat of Satan's kingdom and all those who are subject to him. We can rejoice despite what seems to be going on around us at this particular point in time in our country and in our world. We can rejoice in what is to come just like King David could rejoice because we are trusting in the character of God. Yes, as Paul says in Philippians 4.4, 4, rejoice in the Lord always, and I will say, rejoice. God is truth. Darkness and evil cannot win. God's truth prevails, amen? All glory to God. We have the victory through Christ. Our final point today that we learn from David is exalting God is his might. Exalting God is his might. Verse 13 says, be exalted, Lord, in your strength. We will sing praise your power, sing and praise your power. Psalm, this psalm ends as it began with a praise to God. God is all powerful. Thus, David is exalting God because he is the all-powerful God. It is what is called inclusio in Latin. Verse 1 in 13 makes the beginning and end of Psalm 21 a unified whole. Be exalted means that the Lord be lifted up. David is saying, God is exalted above all things. He reigns supreme. He is Lord of all. He is all powerful. He is sovereign. He has authority over all. You, Lord, are almighty, full of strength and power. This repetition of Lord in your strength, which is the mark of unity of the content of the Psalm in verse 1 and 13, is its message. The whole point of Psalm 21, exalting the Lord for he is strong and powerful. This verse is similar to Psalms 1846, which says, The Lord lives, and blessed be my rock, and exalted be the God of my salvation. And also in Psalm 4610 states, Cease striving and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. We will sing and praise the Lord's power. We will sing of great things you, Lord, have done for us. Just like in Revelation 7, verses 10 to 12, where it says, And they cry out with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. And they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. We can rejoice because we know what is coming. Revelation 12.10 says, Then I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, Now the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brethren has been thrown down, and he who accuses them before our God day and night. Satan will ultimately be defeated. People of God, watch and see the manifestation of God's strength and power among his people, in order that the Lord our God may be exalted. We can rejoice, because greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. Satan can try many tactics and forms of deception, but in the end, he must bow down to the King of Kings and Lords of, Lord of Lords. Amen. In conclusion, the reason that we can thank God for our victories and we are rejoicing over what is to come, as well as we have reason in exalting God, is because we are trusting God who is all powerful and almighty, amen? Are you like David 
able to rejoice in what the Lord has done for you and is doing for you? Can you rejoice over what is yet to come because you know that God is with you and he will bring you through all your current and future battles, which you're, you will go through? In him, we have the victory. Do you believe this? Is your future secure because you know who holds it? Can we, like the Apostle Paul, who said in 1 Corinthians 15.57, say, Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Before I pray, I would like you to spend a few moments talking with the Lord. Let us pause, and if you already know the Lord, offer up thanksgiving to God for what he has done in your life. And if you do not yet know the Lord, you can ask him into your heart right now. Ask him to forgive you of your sins, to come into your heart, to make him Lord of your life, to let the Holy Spirit be your guide as you walk with the Lord and turn from what you were doing, the things you may have been serving. And if you just prayed and asked Jesus to come into your heart, you can now offer a prayer of thanksgiving to the Lord for saving you, for redeeming you. Let's pray. Lord, we know that many people fail because they do not put their complete trust in you. We ask that you would work in our hearts and our lives to help us put our whole trust in you as David did. We also want to give you thanks. This psalm is a prayer for victory given to David by you, Lord. We want to thank you that you, for all you do in our lives, we declare that you are Lord and we acknowledge your strength and power at work in our lives. Even when we don't understand why we go through troubling times, we can rest assured that you are right there with us, fighting for us. Just as you fought for David, you fight for us, Lord. Through you, Lord, we do have victory. Lord, we ask that you would just touch our hearts and minds, Father God. Help us to put the complete trust in you that we wouldn't doubt what you are doing in and through us, Father God. Lord, we give you full control, Father God, today. In Jesus' name. Amen. And now as a response to the message today, we're going to sing See a Victory led by our worship team. And then after that, Doc Anna Serrano is going to come and pray for our offering.
Good, good evening, everyone. I'm Sister Anna, or Doc Anna, as they call, call a lot of uh, people are calling me. Thank you, Pastor Amy, for that wonderful, powerful message, reminding us that we have, the, we have always to rejoice because the victory is in us through Jesus Christ. Thank you. And uh, let's pray for the offering. Heavenly Father, we come to you right now, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you that you are uh, our loving Father, a faithful Father, and uh, all-powerful, almighty Father, Lord. And thank you that, uh, like uh, the preaching, the word that uh, we heard today, that like King David say that you, he is thankful, Lord God, because you give us beyond what we ask for, Lord God. Thank you, Lord, that you have blessed us with so many things beyond what we are asking for and beyond what we really deserve because in the first place we do, don't deserve anything lord god but you provide us and continue to forgive us everything that we need lord god right now lord we la just thank you and we're so uh honored because you you always give us blessings and we just uh, want to 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 obey your command to honor you with our wealth and the first fruits of your our crops lord god and uh, we just lift up to you all the offerings and our tithes and offerings to you, Lord God. May, may you bless these offerings, Lord God, for the furtherance of your kingdom, Lord God. And may you bless each one, Lord God, who, who give, Lord God, with a cheerful heart, Lord God, with sincerity and gratefulness in their hearts to give. Because they know that you have provided, you are the one who provided this for for them, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. We love you. We honor you. And we give you thanks and praise, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And uh, for ways to give, uh, you could just see in our slide that we could give through uh, visiting our website, uh, www.nhicag.org slash give. Or you can scan the QR code once you scan that, it will prompt you to a link to through the PayPal. So you'll just follow that. And also other ways to give is by issuing a check made out and mailed to New Hope International Christian Center. The address is 9852 Linden Street, Bellflower, California, 90706. Or uh, if you want, you could also text Pastor Eric or Pastor Ricky. And they, if you have a check, they could pick it up from you. Thank you. Thank you for being faithful. Uh, and, and God bless you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Doc Anna, for um, that wonderful prayer. And Pastor Amy, thank you for your message. Uh, we would like to uh, encourage each one to continue attending. Hold on, let me let me share this. Uh, join our prayer meeting. Uh, it's going to be um, every Monday and uh, Thursday th th through Thursday. I mean, um, eight to nine p.m. via Zoom. And if you have any prayer requests. Uh, if you cannot attend uh, because of work schedule, please send in your prayer requests to NHICC at NHICCAG.org. Amen. Uh, I have a, a, a very important announcement. Uh, this coming uh, February 7, the first Sunday of February, we are going to start uh, live streaming our services uh, in, from the sanctuary. Woohoo! Uh, and so uh, links to join uh, in will be posted up on our Facebook page and our messenger chat group. Uh, so it's not going to be uh, via Zoom. Uh, it's going to be by, via Facebook Live or uh, Facebook Watch. And so please uh, check our, our FB page and our messenger chat group for all the links. Uh, I know Sister Eva is going to uh, do that for us. Amen. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for the, um, hold on, let me, there you go. Thank you so much for uh, joining us. And I just would like to close us in prayer. Um, and 
I'm thankful for the message that Pastor Amy uh, gave us. Thanksgiving for successes, rejoicing over what is to come. That's that's very encouraging because sometimes um, our prayer requests uh, have not been answered the way we expect it to. And so some people grow tired. Some people, uh, uh, they... They feel bad that God seems like God did not hear their answer, their, their prayer requests. But God, in His timing, uh, His timing is always perfect. Amen. And that that passage of scriptures in Psalm twenty one uh, encourages us that something is coming that we can rejoice about now. Amen. That is that is true truth uh, trust. That is true faith where we can thank the Lord by faith for what He is about to give us. Amen. In response to our prayers. Sometimes it's not not yet here, but as we continue to uh, put our faith and our trust in Him, it will come. Amen. And when the victory comes, ha, it's better than what we expected. Just like what Pastor Amy said, when God answers our prayers, we have expectations. Sometimes we don't get it right away. But when He gives it back to us, it goes beyond what we expected Him uh, to, 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 uh, to answer our prayers with. Amen. For He is the God who, is, who exceedingly, abundantly gives beyond what we think and even imagine. Hallelujah. God is good. So let's pray and, and, and let's ask the Lord for His blessing uh, for us this week. Father... We are so grateful, Lord, for your message, Lord, this this morning, this evening. We thank you for the word. Lord, we thank you for uh, each and every member, O oh God, of the church that is here joining us, O oh God, in, in, in worship and in listening to your word and in prayer. Lord, I, I pray, O oh God, right now that you will minister to them through the power of your spirit, the truths that we have heard. Apply to their situations, Lord. There, there, there are times, Lord, that we uh, sometimes get frustrated, Lord. That uh, it seems like uh, the, the our 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 prayers have not been answered the way we expected, Lord. But thank you that we can trust you, uh, even with your no or your not yet, because there will be a rejoicing that will come, Lord, when you bring in the answer more than what we expect it to. Lord, your name be exalted on high forever. And I pray, God, for your blessing to be upon your children, to be upon your people today. Let this week be a week, Lord, where we could glorify you and make you known, Lord, and also a week where we would know you deeper in a personal way in our lives through prayer, through your word, through our personal worship. Lord, I pray for your blessing upon your children now may the lord bless you and keep you may the lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you may the lord lift up his countenance on you and give you peace amen amen
See you.